Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can export a video from DaVinci Resolve 14 uh, to a file once you're done editing it. So as you might have guessed, the final tab on the bottom, Deliver, is where you export a video to a file or a network location. And when you pop into this tab, you're going to see something like this. Um, by default, your render settings are set to the custom preset, uh, where the format will be QuickTime. The resolution and frame rate will be whatever your video project is set to, and uh, you can see what those are set to by going to project settings up here. You can see playback frame rate, timeline resolution, and that's file, and then project settings, or shift 9 on your keyboard if you're interested in that. Um, so we scroll down, we see that we have the resolution, the frame rate, uh, constant bit rate. I guess one of the advantages of uh, QuickTime is that you don't really need to worry about changing the bitrate on the export. Um, usually I actually switch to MP4 though, because MP4 is a really good format. It's kind of used universally. It's compatible with almost any video editor, any computing machine. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever really had a problem actually playing back an MP4 file uh, exported with the H.264 video codec, but you can play around with these. There's actually a whole lot of different formats. Uh, and codecs, depending on uh, obviously which format you choose. Um, so if you do decide to switch to MP4 anyway, if you come down here, you'll see that it's added these quality settings. So you can just leave it automatic best if you want. Um, sometimes when I'm doing these kind of screencast videos though, I will actually restrict it to 5,000 kilobits per second. And you might think that, oh, that's not that much because it actually defaults to restrict to 10,000. But the thing is, screencast videos have very little things actually moving on. So you could get away with far less than 5,000 KB per second. And it's just a matter of reducing the actual video output file size. Um, so obviously the higher your quality is, the higher the file size is gonna be, <laughs> sorry. So let's move down. Uh, most of this advanced setting stuff, you're really not going to need to mess around with too much. So we'll pop over to the audio tab here. Um, the data rate, I would recommend uh, just leaving this at least above 128 KBs per second. Once again, you can also increase it if audio is really important to your production. Uh, the higher this data rate is, the more crisp, higher quality audio you're going to get. If you're talking about like MP3s or uh, let's see, music that might get released to a CD, it's often higher than this, but as long as it's above 128, you're pretty much going to get just fine audio. So leaving it to the 192 KB per second default is perfectly fine. Um, obviously, there's only uh, one audio codec here, AAC, and that should work for you. So in the file tab, we can set a name for our export. And we have two options here, custom name and timeline name. If you choose timeline name, then what your uh, video export is going to be set to is the same name you see up here in the edit tab. So this is the preview window for what's actually going on in the timeline. It says timeline once, so that's what the name would be if we exported like that. If you'd rather set a custom name, you can just check that little radio box there. Give it whatever name you want. So we could just say test project. As an option, you can add on a file suffix, which is going to be uh, a little piece of information which gets added on to the top of this. So you could have it be like dash uh, collection one. And that would be more useful if you were actually setting presets. So then you export with the preset and you know it was part of collection one. Uh, because in the preset, you just have this file suffix set up to permanently be there. And then it gets added on to every video you export with that preset. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, just know that file suffix gets added on to the end of the file name. Uh, the actual type of the file, so like .mp4, that will get added on as, after that as well. So you don't actually need to put like .mp4 or anything here. Uh, the file format will be taken care of automatically. So we can scroll down here. Uh, render speed is going to be one that's somewhat important. So by default, it's set to maximum. Uh, and what maximum is going to mean is your computer is going to be working as hard as it can in order to get the video exported as fast as it can, which is normally what you want, right? But it will slow down pretty much all other processes on your machine. So if you're trying to do something like edit in another program or browse the internet, 
uh, you may run into some issues if you're rendering at maximum speed. So you can click on this drop down and drop it down to something like 50, 75 percent so that those other programs uh, will actually be able to run at a decent speed. Now also by default it's gonna render the entire timeline which usually means your entire video. But if you come down here to the bottom you can hit I to add an endpoint and what you'll notice is this immediately changes to in out range. Um, so if you have in out point set, it's going to be in out range instead, which means only the parts from this endpoint to wherever you have an out point set, so we can add an out point by hitting O, are going to export. So if you do want the full video to render, uh, make sure that this is set to entire timeline. So when you hit add to render queue for the first time in any project, it's going to ask you where on your disk drive you want to store your files. And it'll give you the same options you see in the media tab. So here you can add in locations on your, uh, basically your hard drive or network locations that DaVinci Resolve manages or expects to see media in. And you can export to these locations with just one click. Now, if you ever need to change where it's being exported to, you can come up here to the top where it says location. You can hit browse, and it's going to give you the media locations that are set in DaVinci Resolve. Once again, uh, you can click to open it, and it will show any nested folders that you can use. Um, so if you find one you want, you just click on it and then hit OK. Uh, but in order to actually add in a completely new location, like a new root directory for uh, DaVinci Resolve to be able to manage, you would have to come back over here on the Media tab, right-click, hit Add New Location, and then you can browse to any folder on your computer. And once you've done that, it'll become a new uh, media source for DaVinci Resolve, and you'll be able to export to it as well. So uh, once you've gone ahead and got all of this set up, you can just hit Add to Render Queue and hit start render. Now um, before we wrap this video up I do want to point out that uh, you can get a couple nice presets over here. So if you're trying to get your video up to a site like YouTube, I imagine a lot of you guys are, uh, you can just click here on the drop down, choose 180p and it's immediately going to give you the recommended settings for uh, basically exporting to YouTube as 1080p resolution or in other words 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. Now when you do choose this preset, it's going to uh, basically default back to QuickTime. That's what they kind of recommend you use, though I still prefer MP4. And uh, you'll see some other settings uh, down here that are kind of optimized for having good quality on YouTube. But if you ever come up with a set of basically presets you want to keep, like let's say MP4, you reduce this down to 5,000 for the max KBs per second, and you want to keep that, you can left click up here at the top right and hit save new preset, and then just give a name. So preset one, and then this section will pop up here for your user defined presets. You can click on the drop down and select any preset that you've previously defined, and you can just click that once for any new videos as well. So that's really going to be it for basic exporting inside of the Deliver tab for DaVinci Resolve 14. I hope you guys found this video useful, and I will see you guys in my future video content.